All right, everybody, this is a follow-up to part one of Gradient Descent for Linear Regression. Uh, it's also going to be stolen from uh, Isaac Floss' blog posts, so you can actually see the, um, the link right above here. Uh, the purpose of this follow-up is to actually show uh, Gradient Descent in a little bit more complicated manner and actually to show you how you could animate it. Uh, so there's a terrific post on this from Isaac. I do suggest you guys uh, check that out. Um, but what I'm going to do here is walk you line by line through much of the code that was taken from the blog post and a few alterations just to enable uh, the animations. So first and foremost, uh, we're going to load in some libraries. I actually think I can remove this math library. Hopefully we get lucky and, and I don't uh, mess it up. But we're going to import matplotlib.pyplot. We're going to notate it as PLT, so every time we want to call it, we call PLT. We're going to import, and that's going to be used for plotting, uh, so basic plotting. Uh, we're going to import pandas as PD. Every time we want to call it, we, you call uh, PD. This is going to be for data formatting, basically use the tabular data aspect of that. Um, we're going to import numpy as NP, and this is going to be for basic arrays and, and algebra uh, stuff. We're going to import IPython. IPython is, allows you to actually play video. Um, so we're going to actually utilize that in a, to show the animation itself. I don't know if you need to do that uh, because we're eventually going to import the animation aspect of matplotlib. And from what I have seen in other posts, it actually is possible to animate only using that, I believe. I did not figure that out. So we're going to go ahead and use this ipython.display um, to actually play the video on the uh, notebook. So let me go ahead and load those in. All right, the first step here, once you have those loaded in, is to create our data. And our data is going to be very simple. Uh, it's going to be simple, but it's going to be a lot of data points. So we're going to use uh, numpy.array, which and uh, numpy.arrange, which is going to give us a an array of numbers 0 through 99. And that's going to be our x's. So we have 100 x's, and that's our input, right? So 0 to, I mean, you can simplify and think 1 to 100. Um, and then what I'm going to do is create a line and basically I'm going to add a slope to that. The slope is going to be 3. You can add whatever you want but I just picked 3. But because I don't want a line fit to a line, uh, I want it to be a little bit more realistic. So what I did was add some random noise to the line. In order to do that, for in the NumPy library there's a sub-library called random and a function called randint. That gives you a random integer between, uh, it gives you a, uh, an array of integers from zero, basically zero to 100 being those your your numbers, and they uh, fluctuate by 60, I believe. And forgive me if I'm slightly off in that description, but I think that that generalization may may be enough uh, to use it. Um, and of course, you can look up the the actual documentation if you doubt me or if I didn't mix anything up. Uh, what I did then is take this line with a slope of three and add the noise to it, and that gives me my output. So what that's going to look like using the PLT scatter function is this. So obviously you see a clear kind of a regression line to it, or a clear slope to it, but the data is a little bit bouncing around. So it, it looks somewhat like real data. Okay, so uh, this next, the next two uh, function call, uh, definitions are actually stolen pretty much directly from Isaac's post. Uh, what I've done is modified just a little bit to use in the animation function, and I've commented it quite a bit more. So on the graph gradient descent function, which is basically the plot function for this gradient descent uh, function that he's going to show next, it takes some input values of values, cycles, figures, and step. Values are your x's and y's, but they're going to be in a data frame, and they also include the predictions. So you have your original x's and y's, you have original prediction, and then every update as you go through the gradient. The cycles are how many times you're going to go through the gradient descent. You can do it infinitely till you know some value arrives at something you want, or you can end it at a set number. It's safer always to end it at a set number, and for our sake, we're keeping that number pretty small. Figures is uh, for his sake for for gradient descent. He actually set it up not where it's animated, but where it shows you a figure as it goes through. So the first gradient descent call shows you a figure, the next one shows you a figure. This says how many figures do you want to show. Uh, I believe, so we're going to use 15, so it'll show 15 figures. And then step, step is actually going to do um, how big, or um, the, I think, I think how many cycles you move forward, if I'm not mistaken. 
So yeah, how big of a step this the descent will take? I actually think it's how many cycles you will move forward. The first step in this function is to actually just create the figures. So you have a plt.figure and you set the size to 20 by 10. I believe that must be pixels or something similar. Um, for the figure aspect, I want to mention that if we set, or excuse me, for this next aspect, we're going to set figures to 15. We're also going to set columns to 3. These are all subplots, so we have three columns of subplots and a total of 15 figures that need to fit there. So what you're going to do is take the number of figures, which is 15, and divide it by three. That gives you five rows. And so he did math.ceiling, so we actually do need that. So let me go ahead and rerun that. So we do use math. So it's math.ceiling, that's the one line that we use. Um, and he calculates that to give you five rows, essentially. So that's what the, the function to actually plot the value, or excuse me, to set up the plot. Then you actually have to go in and calculate the values and actually plot the values. So on each subplot, you have the option to designate basically the axes. This is saying I have a subplot, a series of subplots that have five rows, which you've calculated here, and three columns. And at this specific position, which we're going to loop through, at position one, I want you to plot the following. Then it loops and goes to position two, I want you to plot the following. And the following is going to be the values at x, the values at y. Then you're going to plot, so those are the actually the values. Then you're going to plot the very first cycle. This is the guess. And the guess just gives you where you started. Okay? And then you're going to plot the new uh, guess, the new prediction. And that is going to actually be, you know, this value plus whatever step it is. Then you're going to label it set legends and you're going to set your axis limits. That's important because it actually may automate that it's off your your axes. Okay, so that's we're, we went ahead and run that. Next is the actual gradient descent. So this is kind of the actual math, if you will. We're going to go ahead and set alpha to 0 0.0005 and cycles to 15 and those will be input into this value. We also already have our x's and y's, but we'll get to that in a second. So alpha, this was mentioned in the uh, gradient descent uh, part one, is your learning rate. It basically means how much does your, your guess jump. If you guessed 10, do you jump to one or you jump to nine? Yeah, you know, if you guess 100, are you gonna guess, are you gonna drop down to 90 or are you gonna drop down to nine? And how big of a jump is your guess gonna take? And it's a little bit of a, you're gonna have to tweak it a little bit because there actually is wrong values. If, if you pick the wrong values, you actually, it, kind of doesn't work. Um, so you got to find a value that works for you. For the sake that we have today at 0 0.0005 worked really well so it should work fine. Um, let's see and then cycles are again how many iterations are you going to perform. So first you calculate how big is your data set. You, you take the length of the number of the inputs and you calculate what's called the adjusted alpha. The adjusted alpha is just the normalized learning rate. It's the learning rate divided by the number of um, data points that you have. Uh, so then you set up values. Values is going to have a data frame of your x's and y's. And then here we calculate or we set weights and then we're actually going to calculate them. So the weights are indexed to m, b, p, v, b, and p, v, m. The m is slope, the b is inter the y intercept, the p, v, b is the path value of b, and the p, v, m is the path value of m. Uh, path values are basically the observed value minus the predicted value and divided by the number of values. Um, this is talked about in much greater detail in the gradient descent video one and also on Isaac's blog. So if, if that's if you don't know that, go to those uh, blog the blog or the the other video. Uh, and then for values, we're actually going to calculate that based on the these weights. And then we cycle through. When you cycle through, you're actually doing essentially the sum of squares, and you're using these path values to then adjust uh, the new values. And that is going to inherently, it gets you, gives you your prediction. You set the prediction to you, this values output, and then the output you get is going to be the weights and the values combined. So here, we're actually going to run it in the same block. We're going to input our x's, input our y's, import the alpha and cycles, which you've already designated, and we're going to get these values out. So let's go ahead and run that. All right, it is run, and here we're going to then graph it. And here the values are taken from the gradient descent calculation. 
the cycles we've already set to 15. The other two values, which uh, if we go up to graph gradient descent, are figures and step. And again, figures we've set to five, so there's only five figures in this case. And the step will be two, so you're gonna jump two steps along the way. Okay, so let's run it, and this is what we get. So we have five figures. Orange is our initial guess, and if you notice, orange is the same on all of them. And then here, the green value is the current cycle that you're on. You see it goes from the, the initial guess to cycle two. That actually should be, the next one would be cycle one, then cycle two, then cycle three. So we're actually skipping the odd numbers in this case. So here it's a pretty good estimate, but really not that good. Here it gets better. Then it gets even better. And as we go down, it's getting better and better and better. So as you go through these, this gradient descent, that's basically what's happening is these lines are associating closer and closer to the actual data. But this doesn't give you the best idea of what's actually happening. So the next couple steps, what we're gonna do is actually animate this. And what I did was actually create a new gradient descent function that is essentially the same exact information, but I've encompassed the X's and Y's and the, the actual outputs and the da actual data into the function, mainly because I found it rather difficult to do so outside. So there's certainly a way to do that, uh, but my limited ability and brain power, I, I, I simplified it for myself. So this is actually the same info that we just covered on Isaac's gradient descent function, but adapted for the, what we're gonna do next. So I'll go ahead and run that. And I did print out the actual values. And this is the, the data frame format. So this is what you actually have. Uh, your x value is your x's from zero to 99. Your y value is the random y values that we calculated. The cycle zero is the initial estimate, the initial guess, totally random. And then cycle one is the newly updated guess then the newly updated guess, then the newly updated guess, and they start getting better and better and better and better as you go. So you get to actually see that. Next, we actually animate that. And in order to animate that, I imported the matplotlib.animation library, and from that I imported the func animation uh, function. So in order to use this, you have to create a, basically an empty figure, you set the limits of the axes, the x and y axes, to your data. So I, I made sure that the axes went to the max of the x and the max of the y. And if you don't do that, there's a good chance your animation might be off screen. So make sure you do that. Then you plot your data on the axes. And again, just the x's and the y's. And then you create, you draw a line. But in this case, it's an empty line. But the line, uh, this plot variable that you get out actually has two positions, so it's kind of two-dimensional variable. You need the first position. So we do lines at zero, right? And we, we output that. What we're gonna do is use that, and we're gonna update that. And we're gonna update that in this animate function. You can call it whatever you want, but by convention, it's called animate. And it's going to take a single value of input, which is basically an index. And you can call it, again, whatever you want, but by convention, it's i. What we're gonna do is update the Y values. And what we're gonna do is update the Y values based on our values uh, data frame at whatever cycle plus whatever index we're at. So cycle zero, cycle one, cycle two. And each time it goes through, it'll update, update, update. And then again, we're going to label that. And we're gonna label that using this. And we're gonna label it based on what cycle it's on essentially. Then we're gonna set the new data for the line. That new data is going to be the same X values, but the new Y values. So it's just a new line that's gonna be drawn. And then you're going to set the X label. I set the X label just using label, which is right here. And that's gonna update each cycle. And you have to return the line. I don't know if you need to learn return the axis or well. I went ahead and did that. Then you create your animation, uh, your overall animation function using func animation. This inputs the initial figure that you're gonna draw on, the animate function that's going to update, or the update function, if you will, that will update on each draw. And then you have frames. Frames, admittedly, I don't remember what it what it means. I, I kinda went with convention of zero to nine. Um, I want to say it's how many frames that are looped, but I'm not certain of that. I do believe, though, it is an important variable, so maybe look that up on your own time, or copy and paste and see if this works for you. And then interval is gonna be basically how long you take before updating the new line. So basically this is in milliseconds. So I have a thousand milliseconds, it's gonna update every second. 
as we go. In order to display it in Jupyter Notebook, I had a little bit of trouble. I don't think you need to do it this way, but this worked for me, so I do suggest trying it if, if you have trouble. Uh, the Funk Animation output actually has this 2HTML5 video function, which will allow it to be read by this display function. So what you do is actually call this empty and, and you create this video output and you display it using the HTML sub function of display and you just put it into the, the function call. And here to actually show it you do display.display .display and it's the new output. So let's see what that looks like. Okay so here it goes and you'll actually see the, the, the line is bouncing around back and forth but it's getting narrower and narrower and narrower and closer and closer to the actual fit and then it resets and goes over. So this is actually what's going on in Gradient Descent. It says, okay, the this is okay, but it's not great. Let me jump this far in this direction and see where it goes. Okay, this is okay. Let's jump halfway between these other two and see how good it is. Okay, this is better. Let's keep going. And it just bounces back and forth as it, as it makes the sum of square value limited and limited and limited. Uh, hopefully, this gives you a good understanding and here just to show you frames I'm imagining is the number of frames we're showing so you see it goes to nine seconds and there's one second interval so I would guess that's the case um, hopefully this gives you a good understanding of what gradient descent is and how it functions in the background uh, I also hope that it gives you an understanding of how you can animate functions I think it's a very useful thing to do especially when you're trying to explain something uh, or even if you're trying to learn something uh, if you do have any further questions, check out the other Gradient Descent video. It'll be Gradient Descent with Linear Regression, regression I believe it is. I'll put a link in the, the description. And also be sure to check out Isaac's blog. Uh, it is tremendously wide-reaching. I don't think I think he's digging into everything that interests him uh, imaginable, um, but it covers everything from linear algebra and calculus all the way into data science, science and, and basic statistics. Uh, anyway, I hope that was helpful and I hope to see you in uh, future videos.